Today we shall be solving NCRT class 12th maths exercise 5.2 the derivatives. Let's begin with the question number 1. See it's given sin x square plus 5. First step let y is equal to sin x square plus 5. Now differentiating both sides with respect to x this gives us dy by dx is equal to d by dx. Right hand side is sin x square plus 5. Now, because d by dx sin x is cos x, the formula you must be knowing. Now, this is sin x square plus 5. So, what we will get is cos x square plus 5. If it was sin x, the answer is going to be cos x. But the question is sin x square plus 5. So, you will get cos x square plus 5 multiplied by d by dx x square plus 5. This is what we are doing is applying the chain rule. What is inside the bracket? Because this was sign, you got it cos x square plus 5. Now, what is in the bracket? It will be getting differentiated separately. So, we get cos x square plus 5 multiplied by d by dx x square plus 5 which is in the bracket. Now, this cos x square plus 5 as it is multiplied by d by dx x square plus d by dx 5 cos x square plus 5 what is derivative of x square c x square is 2x x uh, 2 power minus 1 this goes by the formula d by dx x power n is equal to n x n minus 1 so d by dx x square is 2x this is what i have put it here we get 2x plus d by dx 5 constant it is 0 so i get cos x square plus 5 multiplied by 2x which can be written as cos x, sorry, cos x into, I'm so sorry, 2x into cos x square plus 5, which is your answer of the first question. We move further. Second question is given as cos, bracket starts sin x. First step, let y is equal to cos of sin x. Differentiating both sides with respect to x, I get dy by dx is equal to d by dx cos sin x as it is what is written in the question. Now see you are having cos sin x right. You know that d by dx cos x is minus sin x right. Now whenever you have to find the derivative of cos of x you will put a minus sign and sin and then x. Now it is cos sin of x. So because it is cos here you will put minus sin sin. This sin x which is in the bracket, it will come as it is because this is the substitute for x in this formula. Here you are having x, here you are having sin x. So, this shaded region will come like this and I have substituted cos with minus sign because it is d by dx cos, it will come minus sign. Now, this sin x will be written as it is multiplied by d by dx what is in the bracket sine of x. This is what I am applying the chain rule as we did in the previous question. So, we are getting the equation dy by dx is equal to minus sine sine x d by dx sine of x right. Now, from here to here you will be repeating the same thing minus sine sine of x multiplied by. Now, what is d by dx sine x? d by dx sine x is actually cos x. So, in this place, I will write cos x. So, what is your answer will be minus cos x sine of sine of x. Very simple. I hope it is clear. Moving to the next question. Third question. Sine of ax plus b. Similarly, as y put it equal to y, y is equal to sin of ax plus b. Now, differentiating with respect to x on both sides, you will get dy by dx is equal to d by dx sin of ax plus b. Now, using this formula, because d by dx sin of x is cos x, so this will be substituted as cos of ax plus b because here x and here, what is the meaning of x here? ax plus b. So, sine of ax plus b will be written as cos of ax plus b multiplied by d by dx. What is in the bracket? d by dx ax plus b applying the chain rule. Whatever is in the bracket will be, get, will be getting differentiated separately. 
So I have cos of ax plus b as it is multiplied by what is the d by dx of ax? It will be a. You know now if it is 7x you will write 7. So it is a plus d by dx b which is a constant it will be 0. Right. So you have cos of ax plus b multiplied by a which can be written as a cos of ax plus b which is the solution of the third question. Moving further the fourth question C. It is given secant of sec of tan of under root of x. Put it equal to y. Let y is equal to sec of tan of under root of x. Differentiating both sides with respect to x you are getting dy by dx is equal to d by dx the whole equation as it is sec of tan of under root of x. Now we know the formula that d by dx sec of x is equal to sec of x multiplied by tan of x. Now be very careful here. Whatever the sec of x you will write sec of x as it is multiplied by tan of x. Now this sec of tan of x here x is being substituted by tan of under root of x. Wherever in this formula you have written x, you will write tan of under root of x. So your answer will be sec tan of under root of x. This is this. This portion means this portion. Now the next portion is tan of x. What will you write? This tan here. And what is x here? x is tan of under root of x. This is tan of under root of x. So many students get confused here. It is very simple. Wherever you have written x for this formula, you will substitute it by tan of under root of x. So you get secant of sec tan of under root of x multiplied by tan of tan of under root of x multiplied by applying the chain rule. Whatever is in the bracket will be getting differentiated separately. So you will write d by dx tan of under root of x. Clear? Now, from here till here it will be getting repeated the same. It will be sec tan of under root of x multiplied by tan of tan of under root of x. Now tan of under root of x. Now the formula is d by dx tan of x is sec square x. So here tan of under root of x the differentiation answer will be sec square under root of x. Because here in this formula this x here we have under root of x. So you will write sec square under root of x multiplied by d by dx under root of x. Again the chain rule. Right. Now repeat this whole equation like this till here the same. This equation is getting repeated till here same. What is the new thing under root of x? d by dx under root of x you will get 1 upon 2 and uh, under root uh, of x. How I have explained it here. d by dx under root of x is actually d by dx x power 1 upon 2 which will be written as 1 upon 2 into x power 1 upon 2 minus 1 which is 1 upon 2 x power minus 1 upon 2 which can be written as 1 upon 2 under root of x. So this portion I have solved and I have written the value here. Okay. Now what you will do is shuffling the items 1 upon 2 under root of x here, sec tan of under root of x here, tan of tan of under root of x here and sec square under root of x here. Okay. Now you can do is take this as the common denominator and your answer comes out to be sec tan of under root of x into tan of tan of under root of x sec square under root of x whole upon 2 under root of x. Actually if you leave the answer here it is very well right. Okay, but to get the exact copy of what is given in NCRT as a solution, I have transformed it into this portion. Even if you write it here, it is not a problem, but it is better to give it in the format which is mentioned in the book. So this completes fourth question. Let's move to the fifth one. This seems a little lengthy, but it's very simple if you listen very carefully. See dy by dx is equal to d by dx sin of ax plus b whole upon cos cx plus d. Here you will be applying the quotient rule. So this will be the common denominator, denominator square. Okay. So it is cos cx plus d whole square. Now in the numerator you will write the denominator as it is d by dx of the numerator which means cos of cx plus d multiplied by d by dx sine of ax plus b minus big bracket starts the numerator as it is 
sin of ax plus b multiplied by d by dx of the denominator which is cos of cx plus d. Now see, I have solved this d by dx sin of ax plus b separately. Let's see, d by dx sin of ax plus b will be cos of ax plus b because d by dx sin x is cos x. So cos of ax plus b multiplied by d by dx what is in the bracket? It will be getting differentiated separately. So you will get d by dx ax plus b cos of ax plus b multiplied by ax derivative is a multiplied by 1 plus b as a constant derivative is 0. So your answer is cos of ax plus b multiplied by a. Right? Similarly, I have separately solved d by dx cos of cx plus d. What is it? Cos of x is minus sine of x. Here x means cx plus d. So you will write minus sin cx plus d multiplied by d by dx what is in the bracket it will be getting differentiated separately so d by dx cx plus d so you have minus sin cx plus d multiplied by d by dx cx is c multiplied by 1 d by dx d which is a constant is 0 so you have minus sin cx plus d multiplied by c now put in the value of this point and this point which i have separately calculated so resuming this statement to here Resuming this statement to here, we have cos of cx plus d multiplied by a cos of ax plus d from here and minus sin ax plus b as it is multiplied by from here I am copying it minus sin of cx plus d multiplied by c. Now when we solve it further, we will be getting this a cos of ax plus b, right, cos of ax plus b into cos of cx plus d. So you have three items, one item, two item and three item and you have written here the second item, here the first item and here the third item. So this is very simple. I have just put a out here and these three items are very simple, right? Now see here is minus, here is minus, minus, minus will turn into plus and you will be getting c sine of ax plus b here and sine of cx plus d here. The denominator as it is. Now what I am going to do is there is a plus sign out here. I am going to bifurcate the denominator. I am going to give this separately to this numerator and this denominator will be given separately to this numerator. So what will I have is a cos of cx plus d multiplied by cos of ax plus b whole upon cos cx plus d whole square plus c sine of ax plus b into sine of cx plus d whole upon cos cx plus d. So I have not done anything. This, this denominator is being given separately to these two items which are there in the numerator, right? Now you see carefully there is cos cx plus d square in the denominator and in the numerator you are having cos of cx plus d which will get cancelled out. So you will be left with a cos of ax plus b this term as it is and in the denominator now you will have cos of cx plus d because this square got cancelled with this. Now plus c. Here it is cos of cx plus d whole square. So I am bifurcating the square. I am writing this term again. So the numerator will stand as it is c sine of ax plus b multiplied by sine of cx plus d whole upon cos cx plus d multiplied by cos cx plus d. So what I did is this square, right? So I have written it for that term repeated. One and the same thing. Now what you have is c. This is a into cos of ax plus b multiplied by. See, this is the denominator cos of cx plus d. So, 1 upon cos cx plus d can be written as sec cx plus d. Clear? Plus c. Now, sine ax plus b as it is multiplied by this sine cx plus d upon cos cx plus d can be written as tan cx plus d. Because sin x upon cos x is tan x. So this is being substituted by tan cx plus d. Okay. And now this denominator is having cos cx plus d. 1 upon cos x is sec x. So I have substituted cos cx plus d with sec cx plus d. Okay. So this is the solution of the fifth question. Let me move forward. Question number 6 dy by dx is equal to d by dx cos x cube sine square x power 5, right? So, what will you do is cos x power 3 as it is multiplied by d by dx of the second term which is sine square x power 5 plus second term as it is sine square x power 5 multiplied by 
d by dx first term which is cos x power 3. Now this I have solved it separately d by dx sin square into x power 5. This is equal to see this square I am taking it here right. So this comes out to be d by dx sin x power 5 whole power 2. Now this is in the format of d by dx x power n is equal to which is n x power n minus 1. So what you will do is this 2 will come here and it will be sin x power 5 2 minus 1. This power I have taken 2 minus 1 multiplied by what is given in the bracket it will be getting differentiated separately. So d by dx x power 5. So now you are left with 2 into sin x power 5 because 2 minus 1 is 1. Here you get it. Now what is d by dx cos x? It is uh, sorry sorry what is d by dx sin x? It is cos x. So here it is sin x power 5. So you will write cos x power 5 multiplied by d by dx x power 5 because this x power 5 will be getting differentiated separately. Now it is 2 into sin x power 5 multiplied by cos x power 5 as it is. So what is the d by dx x power 5? We will get 5 into x power 4. So now you multiply this 5 by this 2 you will get 10 x power 4 multiplied by sin x power 5 into cos x power 5. So I have just calculated this here separately. Now, I am calculating this term separately. d by dx cos x power 3. d by dx cos x power 3 will be because you know d by dx cos x is minus sin x. So, you will get the answer minus sin x power 3 multiplied by d by dx x power 3 separately. Now, minus sin x power 3 multiplied by what is the derivative of x power 3? It is 3 into x square. Right? Now, this term copy answer from here and this term d by dx copy answer from here. So I will be substituting in this equation. I am getting dy by dx cos x power 3 as it is. Now this answer here I am copying from here. It is 10 x power 4 into sine of x power 5 into cos x power 5 plus. This sine square x power 5 here comes as it is multiplied by this d by dx. I am copying the solution from here. So it will be bracket starts minus sin x power 3 multiplied by 3x square. So I will be now opening this bracket. I will be getting see 10x power 4 here multiplied by sin x power 5 cos x power 5 into this term cos x power 3. Clear? Now this is plus, this is minus, this comes out to be minus. This 3 comes here x square multiplied by sin x power 3 here multiplied by sin square x power 5 here. Clear? So this is the solution. Next question, power, uh, question number 7. See, y is equal to 2 under root of cot x square. Differentiating both sides with respect to x we get dy by dx is equal to d by dx bracket starts 2 into under root of cot x square. This is x square. This is equal to this 2 remains as it is and this under root I have written cot x square whole power 1 upon 2. Right? Now what will be the derivative? This 2 will come here as it is. This is in the form. This is in the format of x power n. So you get n x n minus 1. So this half will come here cot of x square 1 upon 2 minus 1. Okay? Multiplied by d by dx cot x square. Right. Abhi to what you did is this to you uh, tackled it in this way. Right. So now you have to take separately the derivative of what term is given in the bracket. So this 1 upon 2 cot x square 1 upon 2 minus 1 multiplied by d by dx cot x square. Now this 2 and this 2 get cancelled you have here 1. So you are left with minus 1 upon 2 as the power. So you will write cot x square whole power minus 1 upon 2 multiplied by d by dx cot x square. So let us calculate here separately what is d by dx cot x. You know the formula d by dx cot x is minus cos x square x. But here I am having cot x square. Taking this formula as the base, my answer will be minus cos x square x square. I substitute this value right here. So I am left with 
this is power minus 1 upon 2 it will go as 1 upon under root of cot x square multiplied by picking this term from here i am writing minus cos x square x square multiplied by d by dx x square please do not forget to write here d by dx x square generally the student will take this term write it here and that's it no please don't forget x square d by dx you have to take separately so you are left with now 1 upon under root of cot x square multiplied by minus cos x square x square so what is the d by dx x square it is 2x so what you get is minus 2x cos x square x square whole upon under root of cot x square this can be the answer if you write it like this but to get it in the format which is given in the ncrt we have to solve this question further we'll pick this answer from here and move further this is what we calculated in the last slide now you have to do a little more twists here what you will do is see minus 2x as it is cos x square cos x square is actually 1 upon sin square so this cos x square x square is written as sin square x square and this is under root of cot x square it is written as cos x square whole upon sin x square because cot x is cos x upon sin x clear now here it is sin square x square which i am writing as sin x square into sin x square rest of the answer as it is it is minus 2x upon sin x square into sin x square multiplied by under root of cos x square upon sin x square now what i am going to do is i am going to take this sin x square inside the under root when this sin x square will go in the under root it will be written as sin square x square in the root it will be written as sin square x square so you are left with minus 2x whole upon sin x square this term as it is under root of because this is going inside it will be sin x square x uh, sin square x square multiplied by cos x square whole upon sin x square and now if you see clearly what we have done is here this sin square x square and there is sin x square so this will get cancelled with this square so you are left with minus 2x whole upon sin x square under root of cos x square this term and this will get cut and you are left with in the numerator sin x square right now what i am doing is in the under root i am writing 2 upon 2 purposely to get the format of the answer you will write 2 upon 2 rest of the statement as it is okay now I have not uh, written anything extra. This 2 upon 2 is 1 only. So, this type of shuffling can be easily done. Now, listen very carefully. This denominator 2 under root, it will be taken here on the top. So, you will be left with minus 2, this 2, minus 2 as it is. This denominator I am taking in the numerator. Under root of 2, then multiplied by x. This x stands as it is whole upon sin x square so now you will be left with under root of 2 cos x square sin x square right now you are getting in the denominator minus 2 under root of 2x okay so you know this formula that 2 cos x square sin x square will be written as sin 2 x square why because we have sin 2 theta is equal to 2 sin theta cos theta please listen again 2 sin theta cos theta. So, here it is 2 cos x square into sin x square. So, theta here stands for x square. So, the answer will be sin 2 theta. So, here you will get sin 2 x square. Clear? Now, the numerator as it is minus 2 under root of 2 x whole upon sin x square under root sin 2 x square. So, this is the solution which is given in your NCRT book. We move to the next question. Question number 8. Let y is equal to cos of under root of x. Differentiating both sides with respect to x we have dy by dx is equal to d by dx cos of under root of x. Now you know the formula because d by dx cos of x is minus sin x. So you will write here instead of x what is the value under root of x. So your answer will be minus sin under root of x multiplied by d by dx under root of x chain rule. Now, minus sin of under root of x as it is multiplied by d by dx x power 1 upon 2. So, this will be minus sin under root of x 
into 1 upon 2 x power 1 upon 2 minus 1 which will be minus sine under root of x multiplied by 1 upon 2 x power minus 1 upon 2. This 1 upon 2 minus 1 will give you minus 1 upon 2. So, this can be written in the denominator. You will write minus sine under root of x into 1 upon uh, this line 2 under root of x. So, what is your answer? Minus sine under root of x whole upon 2 under root of x. This is the solution of question number 8. Moving further, question number 9. C. f of x is given as x minus 1 where x belongs to r. A function f is differentiable if left hand limit, left hand derivative is equal to the right hand derivative, right? Now to check the differentiability of the function at x is equal to 1, we have first you take the left hand limit. Limit h, h approaches 0 minus f 1 minus h minus f of 1 whole upon minus h which is equal to limit h approaches to 0 minus 1 minus 1 minus h minus 0 whole upon minus h. So, in the numerator you are getting plus h this 1 minus 1 stands cancel minus h minus h will be plus h whole upon minus h which is equal to minus 1. And the right hand limit is limit h approaches 0 minus you have f 1 plus h minus f of 1 whole upon h. This is equal to 1 plus h minus 1 minus 0 whole upon h. So you are left with limit h approaches 0 plus h upon h is equal to 1. So now you see the limit left hand limit is not equal to the right hand limit. So left hand derivative is not equal to right hand derivative f of x is not differentiable at x is equal to 1. This is the solution of question number 9. Let us move to the la, this question number 10. Now what is this question? f of x is equal to x. x lies between 0 and 3. At x is equal to 1. We will check the differentiability at x is equal to 1. f of x is differentiable at x is equal to 1 if limit left hand limit is equal to the right hand. So left hand limit limit h approaches 0 f of x minus f of x minus h whole upon h is equal to f of limit h approaches 0 f of x plus h minus f of x whole upon h. So now you substitute x by 1. So you will have f of 1 minus f of 1 minus h upon h is equal to f of 1 plus h. Here also you substitute x by 1. 1 plus h minus f of 1 upon h. Now this is 1 minus 1 minus h upon h is equal to 1 plus h minus 1 upon h. Here it comes 1 minus 0 upon h, 1 minus 1 upon h. 1 upon h, 0 upon h because they are not equal. So f of x is not differentiable at x is equal to 1. This is the answer of the solution. Is it differentiable at 1? Next slide. For x is equal to 2, let us check it in the same way, in the same pattern as we checked it for x is equal to 1. So, here limit h tends to 0, f of x minus f of x minus h, whole upon h is equal to limit x tends to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x upon h. Substitute x by 2, so you will get f of 2 minus f of 2 minus h whole upon h is equal to limit h tends to 0, f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 whole upon h. So, this is giving you 2 minus 0 upon h is equal to 2 minus 2 upon h. So, 2 upon h and 0 upon h which is not equal. So, f of x is not differentiable at x is equal to 2. So, this is the answer of the 10th question. I hope I have made the things very clear. This article was really important to you. Please like and subscribe to my channel. You can feel free to ask any doubts. Please mention in the comment section. You have any suggestions. Please feel free to write in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Stay blessed.